Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part three on Jacob's Trouble. It's actually going to be the second part of the hate and persecution. I try to keep these studies down to an hour, so that's why I have to, uh, you know, break them up. All right. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, let's take a look at what the Bible has to say. In the book of 1 John, chapter 3, in verse 11, For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Hmm. Didn't Jesus say in the two commandments, love the Lord, love thy neighbor as thyself? On these two hang all the law and the prophets? Oh yeah, sure did. Okay, let's go to John chapter 15, starting in verse 16. John 15, 16. Jesus speaking. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Now, obviously, Christ is talking to the apostles. Christ picked the apostles. The apostles didn't pick Christ. They agreed to go with him, but they didn't walk up to Jesus and tap on his shoulder and say, hey, I, I'd like to be your apostle. You know, that's not how it happened. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate, hate you, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hateth you. And if you don't believe that, join some large Christian group, and the so-called atheists will be all over it. John chapter 15. Jesus speaking, and he's talking about the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are a denomination of the Jews. John 15, 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. What's a cloak? It's like a cape. It's a covering. You know, it's a piece of clothing. Uh, America, we don't wear cloaks anymore. But, couple hundred years ago that cloaks, cloaks were very popular in England. It's like a cape, basically, and you could, you know, use it to break the wind and what have you. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. That's a very profound verse. You should read the 
Jews that promote the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, they absolutely hate Jesus. They absolutely despise him. They say that he was the most evil, vile anti-Semite that ever lived. They hate him. Jesus said, He that hateth me hateth my Father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. Even the unbelieving Jews admit that Jesus performed all kinds of miracles that they attribute to magic and the power of the Satan and the devil, satanic miracles, as they call it. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Matthew 10 and verse 15. Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking. It shall be more tolerable, tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge. Scourge means whip. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. Uh, okay, who hangs out in the synagogues? You know, this is one of the things that really bothers me. Is that the uh, denominational church world, and I was getting into this, some uh, discussions with people claiming to be Seventh-day Adventists. They, uh, they, they tell you, oh, yeah, it was the Romans. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Romans hanging out in the synagogues, right? But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, and for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Matthew twenty three thirty three. Jesus speaking. Who's he talking to here? Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets. Uh, who, who did God send the prophets to? Rome? Japan? The Incas? The Aztecs? The Mexicans? Uh, no. I send unto you, unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. John, chapter 16, verse 1. Jesus speaking. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, Again, who hangs out there? They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. That's funny. He mentions the synagogues, and then he mentions somebody killing you, thinking they're doing God a service. Hmm. 
And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Mark chapter 13. Mark 13 is one of those parallel accounts of Matthew 24. Disciples asked Jesus what it would be like at the end of the world, and this is part of what he will say. Mark 13, verse 7. And when, you sh when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, wars, be not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues? But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. All right, turn to Acts chapter 5, verse 1. Now, people were making donations to the apostles. Keep that in mind. Verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. Privy means, you know, she was in on the secret. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias... Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? See, what he did was, is he sold the land and was saying that he was giving everything to Peter, you know, to help with the church. But he lied about the price. You know, maybe he sold it for 20000 and he said, well, I sold it for 18000 and he kept 2000 for himself, for an example. You know, and and Peter's like, you know, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? You know, in other words, if you wanted to give, if you wanted to sell it for 20 and, and give them 15, that's fine, but don't. But, you know, he lied and said, oh, well, I sold it for this much. You know, he could have said, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you most of it. And I'm going to keep this for myself. He could have done that. No problem. Nobody would have faulted him. So he says, and after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. See, Satan, uh, in verse 3 it says, Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? And then he says, Why has thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? You see, the Holy Ghost is God. People will tell you, Oh, it's just the power of God. That's those watchtower wit, uh, Jehovah's Witless devotees. Thank you, Super William 24-7. But the um, Holy Ghost is God. Just as much as God the Father and God the Son. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. That's pretty harsh. You know, you're 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 giving the church a donation and you end up dead. Well, it's because he lied about it. You know, if you sell it for twenty and and you want to give them fifteen and keep five, it's up to you. But don't lie and say, "Oh, I only got fifteen for it." 
it's not good to lie to God. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter an answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. And she fell down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carried her, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were with and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch is the temple, people. They're inside the temple. Well, maybe not inside the physical temple, but they're they're on the within the temple walls. Solomon's porch is, you know, it's not the inside of the temple where they were doing the sacrifices. But they're there by the temple. You know, you got a house and, and you got a porch. You're outside. You know, you got to go inside the house, but you're on the, the property. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest durst, that means dared, and the rest durst no man join himself to him, but the people magnified him. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both both of men and women, insomuch that they were brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by, passing by might overshadow some of them. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, Pretty obvious where they are. Unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Then the high priest rose up. This is not a Catholic priest. This is a Jewish priest. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees. The Sadducees is a denomination of the Jews. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Indignation means disgusted hatred. Okay? Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. So here it is. The apostles are healing sick people. And the Sadducee Jews are filled with indignation. Isn't that wonderful? They're doing good things, and the Jews are unhappy. Verse 18. And, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. It wasn't the Romans that did this, it was the Jews. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple. Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel. This is the Sanhedrin people and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold! The men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain of, with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, they uh, want to shut up Christianity, but I tell you what, the 
people knew better, and they knew that if they did some bad things to these guys, they'd probably get killed by the people. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? What name? Not Yeshua. Jesus. That's the name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us? Well, if the shoe fits. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, not Yeshua. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Who's Peter talking to here? He's talking to the Jews. He's not talking to the Romans. He said, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with a right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Yep, you don't like what you're hearing? Kill them. And who's doing the, wanting to do the killing here? The Jews want to kill Peter and the apostles. Plain and simple. It's not the Romans. Verse 34. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel. Pharisees are a denomination of the Jews. They were a different denomination than Sadducees. The, uh, and Gamaliel, I've read some of his writings. A Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to be to put the apostles forth a little space. In other words, you know, let them, take them over there. I'm going to talk to you. And said unto them, this is Gamaliel talking, You men of Israel, take heed yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutius, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught, to nothing. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. That's right. They don't want you to speak in the name of Jesus. They even change the name and want you speaking in the name of Yeshua. And you know who Yeshua is to a Noahide, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, Kabbalah Jew? Yeshua is Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. So when they say Yeshua, they're not talking about Jesus. If they want to say Jesus, let them say Jesus. So here you got they, the Jews, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. You ever hear this stuff preached on TBN? No. No, you sure haven't. All right. So... Now, how about Acts 9.23? And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. What? I thought it was the Romans. No. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. All right. In 
Take a look at Acts chapter 9. 